Hi everyone, it's me again, Dan Scott with the Revelation Deception channel on YouTube. And I am here to discuss yet another spurious matter in the book of Revelation, which is in relationship to the heavenly on Jerusalem, of which the book of Revelation refers to as New Jerusalem, the bride, which simply is contradictory to Galatians chapter 4 verse 26. And the reason for the video is primarily due to things that I am noticing in relationship to these many YouTube channels talking about Nibiru or Planet X. And now even people claiming they are witnessing a hexagonal sun. Where some are even going as far as saying that the sun and the moon are artificial. And according to the coming of the Son of Man, we read in Luke chapter 21 verse 25, and there will be signs in the sun and the moon and the stars. So some of these things that people are reporting or witnessing in relationship to the sun, the moon, and the stars, not planets according to heliocentrism, but stars, celestial bodies, or enlightened ones, Genesis 1.16. Now, of course, a hexagram represents a cube, which is a significant occult symbol. And immediately what welled up in the spirit of my thinking after seeing some of these images is what I want to discuss in this video in relationship to the New Jerusalem of the spurious book of Revelation, which is said to descend out of heaven. And when I first discovered these images, it was through a YouTube channel called Big Asian Package Blog which I actually discovered on April 11th, where on Wednesday, April 13th, 2016, he announced his farewell regarding his channel, where he's claiming threats on him and his family by the NSA, which in itself is very spurious. And according to a few others regarding this hexagonal sun, some are supposing it may be a craft, a UFO of sorts that is producing this light array. And as a matter of fact, there are patents held by NASA and other contributors such as Bausch and Loam from as early as the 1950s of various solar simulators using hexagonal arrays, which I believe is just more serpent fallen angel technology being brought to humankind as it was being done so is recorded in the Book of Enoch. And if you search on YouTube, Nibiru was patented by NASA, you will find videos concerning this topic. And if what the very few are observing here is real, if this light array craft exists, then obviously it's in the testing stage. And if it's in the testing stage, what is its purpose? Is NASA with their serpent split tongue logo seeking the embitterment of mankind? No, of course not. And I'll leave it up to you to do your own research into the hexagonal sun or the artificial sun and how it may tie into this so-called planet called Nibiru or Nibiruv. But what I want to do is carry this into the biblical context of what I believe may in fact be its relevance in the deception that is coming and how it may tie into the spurious book of Revelation. And honestly, what would be the purpose for such a technology except for lawlessness? Because already the mystery of lawlessness does already in work, but only the down having one is present till he, Christ as head and members, may come out to be out of the midst. And then the lawless one will be unveiled, whom the Lord Jesus will consume with the spirit of his mouth and make down on working in the on appearing, the epiphania of his presence or his parousia which epiphania of his parousia will be at the finishing, the all finished, Hebrews 7.25, after the great affliction, but before Satan and his angels and all the enemies of God are made down on working, we read about the inworking of Satan with every ability and with signs and wonders of falsification, and with every deceit of unrighteousness, of which these things we are witnessing now apply. Among those being wholly loosened away, meaning into the judgment, who will find themselves locked outside of the door of safeguarding, Matthew 25.10, in the context of the parable of the ten virgins, which is relevant to this study, because they did not receive the love of the truth beforehand, 
for their being saved, saved out of the judgment and wrath of God, when the man of lawlessness indeed will be unveiled, where those who will witness this lawless one will be subjected to the tyranny. And what's important to understand is that all of this falsification that will occur is not without God himself sending it. Because we read that God sends them an inworking of error into the end that they faith on the basis of the falsification. And this is so that they altogether may be judged. And what the purpose of God's judgment is for is that it first unveils the evil, which evil brings chastisement, affliction, and correction. It sets and restores right. So understand, there is this inworking of error that God sends in accord with all of this falsification. And there is not one thing in this cosmos occurring that God is not completely sovereign over or aware of in relationship to these false signs, wonders, and deception, which is already at work among those lawless ones, which is being revealed exponentially more and more each day where many are so-called waking up, but they are waking up to the deceptions. Not the truth contained in the word of truth, but the deception and lies, in conjunction with the mystery, see, mystery of lawlessness. And if this inworking of lawlessness was active when Paul penned this epistle in 51 AD, it certainly is active now, and much more advanced, I might add, as we are coming to the culmination of the finishing. And now that we've arrived at the 21st century, with the explosion of technology and now increase in knowledge, what possibly could be the relationship to an artificial sun with patents held by NASA called the NASA star, which can appear as a light array in the form of a hexagram, a cube, what possible relationship could this have with the spurious book of Revelation? I mean, think about it. When judgment will be executed, according to the inworking of Satan, there will be every ability and signs and wonders of falsification. And because the spurious book of Revelation must be interpreted by means of much speculation, not to mention how people venerate this epistle as if it's sacred, God-spirited writ, not recognizing its Gnostic and mystic nature as it maintains a heavy Jewish identity, where in Christ there is no Jew, Greek, slave, free, etc. People are not going to be using sound reasoning when the so-called alien deception manifests, which has been propagated upon mankind for decades now through the Hollywood industrial complex. And when all of this is occurring, people will be panicking in hysteria. They will not be thinking clearly. And if the fallen angels through the serpent organization called NASA have indeed developed a technology, a quiet anti-gravity spacecraft that can illuminate a light array in the form of a hexagram, according to the book of Revelation, they're going to think that this is the city descending out of heaven among those who are not watching, those who are foolish, who are now subjecting themselves to the inworking of error, not loving the truth, who will fall for the deception, which many Christians are entertaining the idea of a false alien deception, where I've even heard the term fake rapture, who are not connecting the dots to these falsifications with the actual the presence or the parousia of Christ, which is not a false event. And the awakening of the virgins will occur at the midnight hour in the middle of the night, a dark hour where at this assembling they will be crying, the bride groom is nearing, come out to the encounter. But not only that, others will be saying, the Christ is here, and the sober-minded will heed the correct voices, and those who are foolish will not, because they were not careful about how they were hearing, because Satan has a cunning way of causing people to get the cart ahead of the horse they become backwards in their hearing channels, Hebrews 6.12. And for Christians, this is due largely to this spurious book of Revelation, containing many contradictions and falsifications to the rest of the writings. And a hexagram is a six-sided cube, and we know that the city is a cube based on the text of Revelation chapter 21. We read, and her city lies four-cornered, and the length is as much as its breadth. 
and he measured the city with the reed at 12,000 stadia. The length and the breadth and her height are equal. And remember this, that it says they are equal, which is the Greek isos, spelled I-S-O-S, where we get our English isometric, hence a cube. And the images on Google that you find often depict this city as illuminating because it also states in the book of Revelation it will have no need of the sun, but also not of the moon, that they shine in her for the glory of God enlightens her and her lamp is the lambkin, which I will mention this lambkin here is another Jesus. Watch my video, another Jesus. So this is the common mindset regarding the city, that when it is descending out of heaven, it will be lit up, illuminated, or flashing like a celestial body. And if you have already awakened to the flat earth conspiracy, which is presently growing exponentially, you may have learned that the sun or the moon are not as far away as science has propagated, which lack of understanding this truth plays into this deception where some of the more compelling evidence for this is seen at a YouTube channel called P-Brain, the letter P in B-R-A-N-E. Watch his video titled, Crepuscular Sun Rays Prove Flat Earth. But those who believe the sun is 93 million miles away rather than several thousand miles away are ripe for deception, not only regarding an alien invasion, but also this cube city descending out of heaven. If one has the perception that the sun is 93 million miles away as a celestial body and an object begins descending out of the sky looking similar to the sun but rather in a hexagonal shape, a cube, well, it only goes to reason they'll believe this object is also millions of miles away as it appears to be descending to the earth. And the current worldview propagated upon us from kindergarten is based on a heliocentric model, which heliocentrism is indeed a religion. And if you don't believe this is true, do your research. Go read about Hermes Trismegistos and how after the discovery of his lost books, Copernicus gave place to the writings of this man on such movement of the so-called planets. When again, like I stated, there is no such thing. The earth is a plane, which the word of God speaks of as a circle containing a firmament. And the sun and moon are also circular disks that produce light. The word of God says that the sun is the greater light and the moon is the lesser light. In the Old Testament, we read of the sun being called the heat and the moon the white one. Isaiah chapter 24 verse 23 reads, and then will be degraded the white one, the moon, and ashamed will be the heat, the sun. Isaiah 30, 26 reads, And the light of the white one will become as the light of the heat, and the light of the heat will become sevenfold as the light of the seven days in the day when Yahweh will bandage the breakage of his people. But the point being is that the sun and moon are luminaries. One is the light of the day, the other the light of the night. As a matter of fact, the moon does produce a cool white light. And of course, the sun, a hot heat. And again, stars are literally in Greek flashing ones. They are luminaries, not suns. Where in Jude chapter 1 verse 13, he refers to them as erring ones. And Paul states, for one star is more through carrying in glory than another star which is in the context to our resurrected bodies, according to the glory and that which God will give each one. So when you look up into the heavens and you see the north star always remaining centered where all the rest of the stars circle around the earth, think about what you're looking at, because these are not merely balls of gas which scientism promotes. And the heliocentric religion all ties together with the occult, such as the Black Cube religion and Saturnalia, and especially Freemasonry, which also belongs to NASA, all according to this cube consciousness. Where again, the extended Hollywood branch of fakery called NASA claims that there is a six-sided feature encircling the North Pole of Saturn, which is a hexagram where they propagate fake CGI imagery to the world, 
trying to brainwash the people into this cube mentality. And dear Christian, if you do not wake up to these truths, you will not wake up to the deception that they are propagating upon mankind, primarily centered around a theory called heliocentrism. And sadly, this satanic theory has now become commonly assumed to represent reality. And what this theory does is it degrades God's human creation to be nothing more than a micro, insignificant parasite existing on a mini dust particle, which micro particle is said to be rotating at 1,000 miles per hour, wobbling on an axis of 23.4 degrees, leaving 666 degrees remaining where this supposed spinning ball is also at the same time revolving on several elliptical orbits, which the second one is at 67,000 miles per hour, supposedly orbiting around the sun, where supposedly at the same time is spiraling 500,000 miles per hour around this so-called Milky Way galaxy, where according to science, this galaxy rockets 670 million miles through a vast expanse of universe with no end in sight. Where according to my own perception, the earth is not moving at all. And we who are faithing into the word statements of truth are to subscribe to this, when in fact this worldview has nothing in common with many scriptural statements in relationship to the creation of the heavens and the earth, and the above and the below orientation, as well as the description of the earth and its fixed foundations, as well as it being described as a footstool. And the last time I checked, a ball does not make a very good footstool. And there are many references to an above and a below, which can hardly be more confusing since an above and a below, according to biblical texts, denies such a twisted orientation promoted by the heliocentrists. Not to mention that the supporters of this heliocentric worldview also move within the circles of the Big Bang Theory. So those who claim to trust God's word but heed such falsifications, they put themselves in contrast to the word of truth. And those who are not gaining the wisdom of God and cleverizing in the on knowledge of Christ and of his word are going to fall for the lie in that hour when the bridegroom is nearing. Not when a city likened to a bride is descending out of heaven in the shape of a cube as adorned for her man, but the bridegroom will be descending with his holy angels, and not seven of them as portrayed in the book of Revelation with these seven spirits, where the angels of the Lord will outcry, Lo, the bridegroom is nearing, come out to the encounter. And this is where the deception comes into play for those who will be consulting the book of Revelation. Because Satan, in his cunning deception, will give false signs and wonders in the heaven. In accord with the twistification of the word statements in this book so venerated called Revelation, in relationship to this illuminated cube. We read, and I perceive the holy city, New Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God, having been prepared as a bride, as a bride. Yes, you heard it correctly, as a bride adorned for her man. And the word bride only occurs eight times in the New Testament. It is the Greek nymphe, which of course is a feminine noun, just as the word city is feminine and Jerusalem is feminine. And why is it feminine? Is it because it's as a bride? Well, this is not according to the Apostle Paul. No, in Galatians chapter 4, verse 26, Paul writes, But the city of Jerusalem above, referring to heavenly on Jerusalem, Hebrews 12, 22, not the Jerusalem of the footstool being the instead type of the true, the true being the one in heaven, but the heavenly Jerusalem above where Paul states it is our mother, the mother city, the better city, not a bride, but a mother. And the word bride occurs only 15 times in the Old Testament, and none of them liken a city or Jerusalem to a bride, or even hint of such a city descending out of heaven, which is only according to the spurious book of Revelation. And like I said, the word bride only occurs in the New Testament eight times. 
And here in John 3, 29, where it states the one having the bride is the bridegroom, is not speaking of the new Jerusalem or any city. Which, by the way, the word new Jerusalem occurs only in the book of Revelation. Nowhere else in all of the Old or New Testament do we read about a new Jerusalem. And when you search New Jerusalem on Wikipedia, you see here that it says in the book of Ezekiel, comma, New Jerusalem is deceptive because the phrase New Jerusalem does not occur in the Old Testament. The Hebrew word chadash, translated new, is not found accompanying the word Jerusalem, Yerushalayim. And this temple described in Ezekiel, not a city, but a temple, says nothing about it being within this monstrous cube city that will have supposedly descended out from heaven. Where besides, in Revelation 21, 22, it says, And a temple I did not perceive in her, speaking of this city. And as I stated, nowhere in all of the Bible, Old or New Testaments, do we see the city typed as a bride. Nor do we see a city out of heaven descending to the earth in the form of a cube or hexagram, except in the book of Revelation. And the parallel to John 3.29, according to the words of the Apostle Paul, is read in 2 Corinthians 11.2, stating, For I zealously seek you in the zeal of God, for I jointedly bound you to one man, to give as a pure virgin, which, by the way, is parsed in the singular here. It's one virgin to one man, representing the oneness or the unity we share as being in Christ, which mystery is great, Ephesians 5.32. So the one, Jesus Christ having the bride, is the bridegroom. And the context of the bride here is not referring to a city, but the one body, being Christ as head over his members, whose dwelling site we are. But Christ as Son is faithing onto his dwelling site, whose dwelling site we are, the we being the outcalled. Hebrews chapter 3, verse 6. So the bride accords with the virgins to be joined to one man, not a city. And then the other half of the eight occurrences of the word bride occurs in the spurious book of Revelation where there are two of them stating that the city, New Jerusalem, is descending out of heaven as a bride, where in verses 9 and 10, one of these seven angels says, I will show you the bride, and then he shows him the city, the holy Jerusalem descending out of heaven, not only as the bride, but also stating it is the wife of the lambkin. Very strange terminology which are not only incongruous, but independent of the rest of prophecy, opposing the principle of biblical hermeneutics, where Peter writes concerning the writ of prophecy that it does not come about out of one's own explanatory solutions or problems of interpretation based on the principle of two or three witnesses, which the many incongruous problems with this epistle causes one to have to speculate concerning the word statements in an effort to try to make meaning of them by twisting them to fit what one thinks it means. And when we see example after example after example and on and on and on of such speculation, it should cause one to question the validity. And why do you think Satan put the threat of a curse at the end of this epistle? Well, so you wouldn't question it. Now, in the context of the deception and the lies, I find these seven angels very curious because you only read of seven angels in the spurious book of Revelation. And as far back as June 2014, I discovered a very disturbing channel called Lie Killers. And one of their videos in particular, titled Nibiru, The Real Truth About the Queen of All Heavens, Not a Bride, Not a Mother, But a Queen where they claim an object is going to appear in September 2017, which they are calling New Jerusalem. But not only that, their false prophecy involves seven hexagonal spacecraft. and They are showing illuminated hexagons, claiming the larger one to be the New Jerusalem was spelled with a Z. And those among the weak-souled, I would say, beware of this deception. That is, if you're going to check out this YouTube channel called Lie Killers. 
because I believe this YouTube channel was created as standby for when that day occurs. And then the man of lawlessness unveiled. That's just my own opinion. And although this YouTube channel does not have a lot of attention presently, if this event does happen to occur on the date they have set, in accord with their cryptic A113 code, at that time it will begin to blow up. And if watching these videos puts fear within you now, can you imagine if their A113 code, which speaks of the unveiling of the man of lawlessness, the Antichrist, can you imagine the fear if this prophecy, this false prophecy manifests? And if it does, I guarantee you their videos will begin to blow up with all of their false propaganda. And let me say this, that the assembling unto the Lord involves a door. He said, I, I am the door. So if someone comes in through me, he will be saved and he will come in and will come out and will find a pasture. John 10, 9. The same door in the parable of the virgins. Matthew 25, 10. Where if you examine all of the occurrences of door in the New Testament, it is never associated with the city Jerusalem, but a courtyard. John chapter 10 verses 1 and 16. Jesus said the one not coming in through the door, which he is the door, into the courtyard of the sheep, but the one stepping up from elsewhere, that one is a thief and a bandit. And not only is the door associated with a courtyard, but also a supper. And if you search the scriptures and study all of the occurrences of bride, bridegroom, bride chamber, wedding, wedding festivities, marriage, etc., none of these things are in accord with a city descending out of heaven as a bride. And as for this context of courtyard, in accord with the hearing of the voice, just like the virgins, who also enter a door, this is in relationship to the tabernacle or the holy place, the exterior open air courtyard, which is that place still outside in the open air of the temple, where in Matthew 21, 17, we see Jesus spending the night in the courtyard. But as for those who are out called and in Christ, we are the temple and we are the dwelling site. Watch my video, The Dwelling of God. So this twistification of words in the book of Revelation regarding a cube city descending out of heaven called a bride appears to me to be in accord with this event at the midnight hour in relationship to the bridegroom nearing. But others will be crying, the Christ is here, which is a falsification because Jesus gave warning. He said, then so if someone says to you, perceive here is the Christ, he is here. You should not faith it. Matthew 24, 22, which cries the Christ is here accords with the inworking of Satan with every ability and with signs and wonders of falsification. According to the whole away loosening for those who will be locked outside of the door because we continue reading and with every deceit of unrighteousness among those being wholly loosened away because they did not receive the love of the truth beforehand for their being saved saved out of the great affliction, which accord with verses such as Matthew 24, 24, for false Christ and false prophets will also be awakened, see? The virgins will be awakened and so will these. And they will give signs and wonders so that if there were ability might, also the outchosen ones would be errorized. Which statement does not say they will be errorized, but if there were ability might, they would. So obviously the false signs and wonders are going to be magnificent. And when all of this is occurring and unfolding, people are going to be hysterical. And even now, many dear brothers and sisters are not thinking soberly. And in this clamor, they certainly will not. And this is why Paul admonishes Timothy to have a pattern, a pattern of words being healthy. And if this falsification of a city descending out of heaven takes stand in that hour, where people are associating it with a bride as adorned for her man, and they are deeming themselves to be the bride of Christ, yet another false expression not found in the word of God. And there's an outcry stating the bridegroom is nearing, but others, the Christ is here. While this hexagonal illuminated star is descending out of the skies, 
there's going to be mass confusion because many are not having a pattern of words being healthy. Christians are deeming themselves as the so-called bride of Christ or either as wise virgins. And how will they react when they hear the Christ is here? When they look up in the sky and see what appears to be a Hollywood movie. And because Satan has implanted the idea that this city is a bride, when the cry, the bridegroom is here, then there will be more confusion. Because people did not have a pattern of words being healthy. They did not heed to the word settings. They did not search the scriptures. They did not pray for a spirit of wisdom and on knowledge of the Christ. And they won't be prepared as ones who interpret the word of God with the word of God, not recognizing the false. And when an epistle such as the book of Revelation stands against biblical hermeneutics in instance after instance after instance, we need to ask serious questions like, why is God a boob man? What is the esoteric meaning they are portraying? Watch my video, A Sun Like One, and begin to pay attention to what we are seeing in the cosmos unfold around us, but even more so, pay attention to the Word of God so that we may connect the dots. And tragically, I'm noticing that many now are perceiving the lies, the deception, and conspiracies, but they're not connecting the dots with the Word of God, the writings, and the pre-explanations of prophecy and neither are they examining the spirits or recognizing false prophecy. And friends, let me say this. There is no new Jerusalem that will descend out of heaven down to the earth. The Jerusalem above is above. It's been there from the beginning. That's where it will remain. And neither is the Lord Jesus Christ going to come and live on the earth for 1,000 years. Yet again, as only read in the spurious book of Revelation chapter 20 where people have coined this non-scriptural term millennium or millennial kingdom, nowhere found in the word of God. We read, But the Most High does not down dwell in what is made with hands, according to the prophet who says, The heaven is thrown to me, but the earthland is the footstool of my feet. What kind of dwelling site will you dwell build for me, says the Lord? Or which is the place of my down repose? Kata pausis. Kata means down. Pausis, to pause or to cease from your work. But the point being is that the orientation denotes downward motion, where the throne and the heavenly on Jerusalem is above or upward, according to that upward calling, Philippians 3.14. Where again, we as ones being stone which a stone represents a spiritual being and one being built into the dwelling site of God. And in the manifest new creation as stones, living stones, we are being dwell built as a dwelling site of the spirit into a holy priesthood and not a priesthood that will dwell on the earth in an instead type of the true as entering into an earthly tabernacle or temple but we will make up that temple as dwelling in the heavens. We read, For Christ did not come into holy places made with hands, meaning the earthly tent, which was called the instead type of the true, but into heaven itself. Hebrews 9.24 And the citizenship of the outcalled, the body, the members of Christ, has its place in the heavens, again as one star is more through carrying than another which citizenship below has its origination or its beginning by reason of which we are receptively out-oriented, or at least we should be, which is completely backwards from this city coming out of heaven, descending down to earth, contradictory to the upward calling of Philippians 3.14, where our out-orientation and our upward turning is towards Christ. Where Paul writes to Timothy telling him that it is binding to turn oneself upward into the dwelling of God, which is the outcalled of the living God, the pillar and the settled base of the truth, 1 Timothy 3.15. The point again is that the orientation is up compared to down or below, contradicting the heliocentric worldview demonstrated in a mass twistification of elliptical orbits rocketing through a universe that never ends. 
I mean, in this artist rendering this video representing this heliocentric motion, try to imagine the holy city, New Jerusalem, descending to the earth or the movement of the stars, how they encircle around the North Star. But I digress. And according to the above orientation, if we are in Christ Jesus, we are to seek those things being above where Christ is having taken seat at the right hand of God. We are to mind on those being above, not on those being on the earth land. For we deadened away, and our life has been secreted together with Christ in God. In accord with that better covenant, which involves a better city and a better resurrection, a resurrection that takes us out, out of died ones, and out into our citizenship, which is in the heavenly realms. And the idea that people have that we're going to live on the earth in the new heavens and new earth among those who are in Christ and his body as being those through carried stars are sadly deceived, which is largely based on this false idea that the heavenly city is coming to the earth with God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ coming with it to reign for a thousand years, which statements cause one's disposition to be downward, not upward. Again, we read in Hebrews 12, 22, but you have come to Mount Zion and to the city of the living God, where again, the Mount Zion on the earth would be the instead type of the true Mount Zion in heaven, to the heavenly on Jerusalem and to 10,000 of angels, to the all-convocation, and to the outcalled of the aforeborn ones, those having been recorded in the heavens, and to God the judge of all, and to justified spirits, to those accordingly accomplished. Where this all-convocation involves those who will come out of the midst among the outcalled. The bodies of our lowering will be after schematized as shaped together to the body of his glory, according to the inworking of his ability, even to subordinate the all to himself, which will be on heavenly bodies, in contrast to on earthly bodies. 1 Corinthians 15.40 So, in conclusion, we see these two contrasting verses that clearly demonstrate conflict, disharmony, confusion, as well as diversion, because the spurious book of Revelation figures the city as a bride, adorned for her man, twice, according to this testimony of one of seven angels to John Patmos, where no other prophet in all of the writ of God does so, where on the other hand, the apostle Paul uses mother as a figure for Jerusalem, Jerusalem above. And as I'm wrapping this up, let's go back to this cube city, a hexagram, casting a spell over the majority of humanity now, who are going cube crazy. And let me address all of you who call yourselves Christians and heed the book of Revelation. Let me ask you this. How would the heliocentric worldview and model support the word statements regarding this cube city descending to earth? Because if the earth is a spinning ball, the foundational measurement of this so-called cube as being isometrical, seen in the Greek, isos or equal, the foundation could not remain flat. According to spherical geometry, the foundational length and breadth would have to account for the curvature of a ball in consideration of the height of this so-called cube at the corners and then the height at the center because it would involve a curve at its base. And if not, the base and foundation of this so-called city would teeter and totter on a ball. And for those who assume the cube is going to just simply hover in the air, then why a foundation wall? And a cube with four isometrical equal sides cannot remain equal sides if it's being bent over a ball, according to the equal dimensions given in the book of Revelation. And for those who are thinking it will be a pyramid, well, you run into the same problems. The three baselines that are bent over a ball at a 60 degree angle will not remain all equal in length, which proposes more problems to those who still subscribe 
to the book of Revelation and a spinning ball earth. And as for this hexagram or cube, do some research. Look into the so-called Star of David. The as above, so below triangles that when they are crossed produce this so-called star, which you see on the flag of Israel, where the center becomes a hexagram. And research the ties between Judaism, Kabbalah, Kabbalah mysticism, Mecca, and cubes where it is also a common practice for those practicing such religions to wear what is called a tefillin, which is a black cube strapped on the forehead or on the arm or both, where we have also the black cube religion, which I believe is all tied together with Kabbalah mysticism and the tree of life, where more hexagrams are seen. So in conclusion, we have to ask ourselves, are all of these spurious cube connections godly? Is the city of the living God really a cube that will descend to the earth? Is it a bride according to the spurious book of Revelation? Or is it a mother according to the Apostle Paul? Are you going to heed the words of the Apostle Paul? Are you going to become an imitator of Paul according as he was also of Christ? 1 Corinthians 11.1 because if you are an imitator of the Apostle Paul, according as he also of Christ, you can't possibly heed the book of Revelation because it's anti-Paulinian on so many levels, making it anti-Christ. And it contains many, many questionable doctrines that are not supported in any of the other writ of God, but rather stand alone, just as its writer who was supposedly stranded alone on an island while receiving such visions. So again, I hope you are starting to wake up to all of these spurious matters in the book of Revelation that you can think soberly and be prepared for what is impending that the inworking of error may not downtake you. And if you're interested in other videos where I discuss specifically the book of Revelation, see my playlist titled problems with the book of Revelation. So as always, may the grace and the peace of God reign in your hearts continually, perpetually, as you turn yourself upward into the dwelling site of God, seeking that which is above where Christ is seated.